Alabama predicted to pick up not one, but two more big offensive linemen. That'd be five in this class. Is that going to happen? It's a huge weekend in Tuscaloosa underway. We're going to talk about the exclusive visitor list and also Keelan Russell, who committed to Alabama, quarterback out of Texas, shows out in the Elite 11 camp, wins the MVP. He's a guy that's helping Alabama recruit just because the guys want to play with him. We're going to talk about that and more right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let's get this party started. And again, always brought to you by our friends at Pearl River Resort. Big Elmo joins us right after this. All right, there he is from Jasper. Got the hat on today. Look at you, big big Elmo, a guy that we know as Brett Elmore as well. Uh, hope your weekend's going great. It's good. It's good. How's yours, Mick? You, uh, you've had a, a great few days, I think. Man, the uh, Rickwood Classic was awesome. Or really, what is it, MLB at Rickwood? Just such a great event. And then, um, yeah, just like doing a lot of stuff, man. A lot of, a lot of things coming together, getting, getting of, ready closer to football season. Yeah. A lot of things coming together. And I want you to look at this guy's threads at the, uh, <laughs> at the ballpark the other night. <laughs> look at this guy. Press <laughs> to a T the yeah. throwback. I like the bow tie. I like the hat. <laughs> Man, you was looking sharp, but I bet you were hotter than eighties. I wasn't. I wasn't. Thanks oh, okay. to thanks to beer, kind of cool, <laughs> cooled me off. <laughs> cooled uh, me man, off. You, you look. You was the sharp, sharpest dressed man in the stadium. Yeah, yeah. Just like ZZ Top said. There you go. Every girl's crazy about a sharp dressed man. All That's right. Great. Well, look, let's get into this on three. Andrew Bone and the gang predicting that twenty twenty five four star Micah Dubose is going to pick. Bama. Wow, this would be a really big win for the Tide, Brett. The Viger product out of South Alabama once committed to Georgia. When Kalen DeBoer got the job, he ran down there uh, to to South Alabama to talk to this guy, and uh, it looks like it's paying off. LSU thinks that they have him too, but uh, that prediction machine, as he's in town this weekend, must be a reason why. Yeah, it must be a reason why it's such a big weekend of recruiting down in Tuscaloosa. But, uh, yeah, normally now, when Andrew Bone predicts it, most of the time it's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would be a great addition to an already stacked offensive line. Yeah, 6'4", 335. And these are the guys you've do. You you, you you've got to take care of the guys in state. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's what Courtney Morgan and this recruiting staff have done, and I got to give them credit. I was worried that they were going to be out in California and everywhere else, which they are, and forget about the guys here in state, but they haven't. They've, they, they've listened, and they're taking care of business, and I would love, love, love to see the Bows pick Alabama, and uh, the on-three prediction machine has shifted from heavy LSU to now heavy Alabama. So we'll find out, and maybe that's one that's coming. And then look at this one right here. Uh, Josh Scoop. Right or is it Shoop? But can we just call him Scoop? Uh, I, I, that's a fitting name for a guy that uh, covers recruiting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know him, but look, uh, five-star offensive tackle, huge Alabama fan, Ty Haywood from Denton, Texas, originally from Mississippi, predicted to go to Alabama. So this would be five offensive linemen in that class if they get them. Well, we were talking about this the other day, Mick. Remember, you you, you posed the question: Do we go for four? Do we go for five? If, if both of these pan out, that's going to be five. So, um, once again, I, I always trust uh, the predictions, and and a lot of people have been talking about it. So, I believe Haywood and, and DeBose will be coming, so that would make five. And, Mick, this, uh, you, you mentioned the recruiting and what a job this, this uh, coaching staff has done. They're currently number one in the SEC and third in the nation. And with with these visitors on campus this weekend, um, 
you know, Antonio Coleman, Abdul Sanders, Luke Metz, uh, Justice Terry, um, um, Dijon Lee, uh, you know, I can go on and on. Yeah, and yeah. On. Derek Meadows, the wide receiver from Bishop Gorman, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, they've got 17 yeah, highly Sharma. ranked recruits. And, Franklin, and if, you got a lot of big time guys. And when and when you when you when you look at this, uh, they have an eye on the number one recruiting class of the nation, and and they may get there. Yeah, Caleb Cunningham, another five star. We've talked about yeah. him a lot. You 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 know him, uh, yeah. Choctaw County. Remember Mississippi? Yeah. yeah. So this is his weekend as well. And then you got some guys that have already committed to Alabama that are in town. And and the cool thing about this is when you look at the the visiting you know, the visitor list, having Abdul Sanders and, and having Luke Metz and Antonio Coleman there, those guys are going to help recruit the other players as well. You know, they're, they're going to, they're, they're, it's not like you're being recruited anymore. You're kind of becoming part of the recruiting process because you're going to want to have the best players around you when you try to win a national championship. You're going to be better because of the guys that you have around you. And so that makes this weekend, I think, even a little more interesting just because when you look at that list and you talk about that list, you've got three big time guys that have already committed to Alabama there. And, and when you're talking about, hey, you know, Dijon Lee, look, man, I'm, I'm going to be here. Why not you? You know, Justice Terry, hey, you know, five star from Georgia, you know, hey, you, I know you're probably thinking Georgia, but you need to think Alabama. You, you, know, you would play right away here. You'd be a really important part of this team. Um, so, it's exciting. I mean, this is this is this is one of the biggest recruiting weekends of the year. Yes, it is, and and yeah, and you're right because it, you know these guys come in this weekend, all seventeen of them, and they're looking around. And they're like, "Hey, you know, this is you know an elite room of people that's it's it's you know it just you just want to make naturally you want to be a part of that." Yeah, no doubt. Uh, let's talk about one of those guys that's not visiting this weekend, but is really proving to be worth every bit of the hype that he's getting. And I'm talking about Keelan Russell Dottom, you know, out there in Texas. Um, the Elite 11 camp, the guy was the MVP, throws, runs, he's a winner, he fits in so well with the Alabama culture because he does care about winning and he knows how to do it. And it's this guy's picking up momentum. And I think that if you're one of those other, those other wide receivers, I saw where, um, you know, he, he's on Twitter and, you know, it's kind of like, Hey, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Five-star wide receiver. You got a good visit at Alabama. Wink, wink, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in this elite 11 camp out in California, uh, it is, it is definitely, you know, elite. And for this guy to come out with the MVP, uh, sent, sent waves around the recruiting world. Uh, but, um, uh, and I, and I saw an interview where he were, he was talking about these guys that were out there too. And, and he was saying, you know, he was naming them off, you know, and he says, you need to come to Alabama and, and, and play, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's just like what you were talking about. Uh, they do a good job of recruiting as well. Yeah. So it's we'll keep an eye on it, man. I mean, this is a big weekend in Tuscaloosa. You know, I think we're going to have some some breaking news here soon. And who knows, maybe by the time you're watching the video. But there's going to be some more commitments that are dropping pretty quick. Uh, Sunday night seems to be the night, though, for some yeah, reason. Does, but, yeah. we'll, but we'll find out. And, guys, I want to remind you, too, that the show's always presented by Pearl River Resort over in Philadelphia, Mississippi, right now is a great time to check out the Time Out Sports Lounge and Sports Book, uh, table games and slots and all that stuff. Uh, and it's a fun, quick trip. You know, if you're somewhere in Alabama, you want that Vegas experience, it's uh, right around the corner. And they've also got Dancing Rabbit Golf Course, which is the Augusta you can play. And if you spend $50 betting in the sports book, you can play that golf course for $40. Plus, uh, Boys to Men. Brian, Brian McKnight going to be there in concert soon. Uh, check out the schedule. Also, uh, Big and Rich and Gretchen Wilson coming up here in a couple weeks. So uh, find out for yourself. And then, and then the other thing, I got to throw this up here before Brett takes over the show. And I, and I got to apologize to Brett. Um, 
you know, we're also presented by New Life Art and use the promo code Bama Tailgate. And when you do that, you get 20 right now, you get 25% off your entire order uh, using that promo code. I swung by and, and saw the gang over there, uh, picked up Brett's Brett's picture and my picture and accidentally gave Brett my picture and kept his picture. So I've got more than 31 in my, in my, my place now. And, uh, you know, and, and Brett's got my, he's got my shrimp festival poster. <laughs> Looks good in my living room. It makes me feel, feel like I ride on the Gulf coast, man, where I want to be. But, yeah, yeah. Oh man. And it was, it ruined my perfect day. It ruined my perfect day. The old switcheroo, Mick calls me and he's like, <laughs> I can't believe it. I thought like the world was coming to an end. And Mick says, I, I've swapped the pictures. And I'm like, it'll be all right, little buddy. We, yeah. We're going to swap it right back. I'll be in Birmingham on Sunday night. We'll get this. There you go. All right. When we come back after this quick little time out, we're going to let you know what's going on in the world today. Right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. June 22nd to you, my friend, Mick. Yeah, happy right back at you, my friend. And uh, someone in the comments section yesterday said that picture in the lower corner of uh, the screen absolutely terrifies them. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably why we haven't gotten any new subscribers lately. We're scaring yeah, probably, everyone. <laughs> I'm scaring everyone off. I'm scaring we both everyone are. off. We both are. <laughs> Today's uh, birthday's... Todd Rundgren is 76 today. Oh I, love Todd. Todd. oh, I love Todd. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, Rundgren. Yeah, Rundgren. Yeah, yeah I got stuck there. But yeah, you, you got stuck, and it was almost <laughs> coming out. He was like, uh, was like I can't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, he's a, a great one. And and let me tell you, I, I know you well. Uh, Chris Christofferson, 88 today. You do know me, man. That is, uh, you know, I'm telling you right now that during COVID, I, I got into boating because, you know, we couldn't do anything else. And I started listening to Yacht Rock, right, which is kind yeah. of the stuff that we, my dad used to play in the car um, when we were kids. And, and it was because Madonna had a song called Like a Virgin. I asked him what that song meant. I just and it was on there. And uh <laughs> And then from then on, we were listening. We, we listened to like soft, soft rock. We didn't listen to anything that could possibly have any kind of lyrical questions that he didn't really want to answer. And so, um, you know, during COVID, I, I get out on the boat and I start listening to Yacht Rock. And um, it was Christopher Cross, you know, like a, a lot of those songs. And so the funny thing is that my son uh, was like, Dad, can you play this one song? And he's like, kind of just like, trying to explain what song it was. And I thought maybe that's Crosby, still Nash and Young's Judy blue eyes. You know, what, what is yeah. he telling me? And then come to find out it was Christopher cross, uh, you know, yeah. like a, it was, one of those coming to Huntsville, by the way. I saw <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. Right. So I, I, I like the guy a lot. I, he's only got to me like a few, like a, a few really, really good songs. And yeah. then a, a lot of other songs that are not really that good, but yeah. The hits were good. The three hits were great. Um, 
Ride so, like the wind. That's the song my son likes. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's a good one. Um, but what does this have to do with uh, Chris Christopherson? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got off on the yacht ride. Right, that's just been the day. And, this and, is the day I've had, brother. This is the day I've had, man. I'm still. I'm, okay, so I'm trying to catch up on all my all my sleep and everything. I didn't have much yet, so. <laughs> You're right. I saw Chris Christopherson in the Highwaymen in Hawaii. You know, I've probably said that on here. Like it was like the la one of the last concerts they ever did together. Willie Nelson, <laughs> um, Willie Nelson was there. Johnny Cash, and uh, who who is the other one? Uh, Johnny Cash. Uh, uh, what Merle Haggard. Uh, Merle Haggard. Yeah, Merle. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's the amazing talents and Chris Christopherson, like. Women still think he's good looking. Like he's a good looking older guy. Like he's aged well. He's still, he was always maybe the face man of that crew. He still is. Yeah. Different Chris, different Chris, Christopher Cross. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was sitting here, it's like, it was a great story. Uh, I love but, how you just uh, let me go. You just let me yeah, wind me up and let me yeah, go. Chris, Chris, Chris. Meryl Streep is uh, 75 today. Wow. Time flies. Golly. Time flies by. But she was a uh, uh, great actor, actress. Uh, yeah. Uh, Carson Daly, fifty-one today. Whatever happened to him? I mean, he was hot know. there, and, and and it feels like Ryan Seacrest came and took I all of his work. I, I I think that's what happened. <laughs> uh, he's like, living in a van think... down by the Warrior River right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Or maybe he just made enough money, some, and he just kind of kicks it at the house. Yeah. Uh, looking for cele or uh, uh, st things to celebrate today. Not a whole lot going on today. Today is National HVAC uh, Tech Day, which is the air conditioning people. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for you. Yeah, well, unless you, you get the bill from them. Right, yeah, then it's... Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I, nothing I, I, they I got, do is cheap. Right, yeah, I, I got a bill not from an HVAC, but I got a bill um, yesterday uh, that was $2,000 more than what I was expecting. Whoa. I was like, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> National Onion Rings Day. You like the onion rings, pal? No, I'm not a huge fan, and and keep onion rings away from your dog. I didn't realize this, but they're poisonous to dogs. No kidding. Yeah. Yep. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, just a, just a FYI. Okay. Uh, today is a stupid guy thing day. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Probably me uh, getting, but, but, getting Christopher Cross and Chris Christopherson confused because I wasn't paying enough attention. <laughs> Stupid guy things. Yeah. Uh, on this date in history, let's see what's happened. Uh, 1870, U.S. Congress created the Department of Justice, headed by an attorney general. You always, I guess, you had to have one of those. Yeah. Uh, so they added it. Um, Big day in boxing, 1937. Joe Lewis knocked out Jim Braddock to win the world heavyweight title. He held on to the title through 25 bouts over uh, over uh, for 11 years until his retirement. I, I, every time I hear that name, I always think of the barbershop scene on Coming to America where the, all the barbers are arguing about, you know, if, if his mama wants to call him Cassius, I call him Cassius. A man has a right to be called Muhammad if he wants the name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He kicked Joe Lewis's ass. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. The uh, 1981 Mark David Chapman pled guilty to the murder of John Lennon outside the former Beatles New York City apartment building. Yeah, just just to, and to show you what kind of a great person. John Lennon actually signed the guy's record for him that morning. Yeah, and then he came and then he yeah, the guy waited there for him to come back and killed him. Um you yeah. know, and that's why that's why people that are like celebrities have to be so guarded because there's there's just there's nuts out there, you know, just complete oh, yeah. lunatics, you know, that'll yeah. do stuff like this. And and we're talking about this guy's name when he's like one of the biggest wastes of breath that we've ever had, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it really just is, it's infuriating, but it, that, what are you going to do, man? One of the most really iconic moments in Monday night football I history, know. other than, other than the football games, was when Cosell came on and had to announce the death of John Lennon. I mean, it's like yeah. it stopped everything. You know? Yeah, 
crazy. It did. Well, and it's a murder death too. You know, it's not like the yeah. guy was sick and had cancer, you know, or something like that. I mean, it, it, it was just like, he's in the middle of his prime. He's still producing. And then, you know, and, and he's the great, one of the great, great legends of, you know, and then some guy just decided he, he was jealous of him and shot him, you know, some kind of just awful. Yeah. Even to this day, it's still awful. It's still awful. Um, 1990, Billy Joel performs the first of two shows at Yankee Stadium. He was the first cool. rock star to play the venue. Yeah, Wrigley does a lot of concerts. Yeah. And, and the money actually goes to the Cubs. Uh, like really? the Cubs, yeah, they, you know, so they can use that to pay players, you know, they can use that to upgrade facilities. But, wow. um, the, the crazy thing is when they upgrade at Wrigley, the very first act to play there was, um, Jimmy Buffett, you know, yeah. and, and I thought that was cool because the guy that wrote Go Cubs Go, uh, a guy by the name of Steve Goodman, mm -hmm. you probably recognize that name because, you know, of that, <laughs> you got that song that, uh, what's that guy? Gabe Leon Co sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's like, and a good, Mr. very good Rant friend of mine, uh, Steve Goodman, wrote this song. <laughs> all right. But uh, Buffett and Goodman and John Prine, they were all buddies from you know, like up and coming folk artists in Chicago. Uh, Billy Joe, I love Billy Joel. I, I do. I mean, Piano Man. He's got a lot of uh, of hits. He's got his own channel on Sirius. I don't listen to it a lot, uh, but. I, I it's because I used to listen to it so much back, you know, in college. I think I just blew it out, you know, with Billy. Yeah. Great act. I'd like I'd like to see him in concert. Uh, yeah, me too. Maybe yeah. he'll come to Yankees. Maybe go come down here and play it. Wouldn't it be cool if he played at Bryant Denny Stadium? <laughs> That'd be nice. I wish I wish we would have concerts like at Bryant Denny or yeah. something like that. That'd be cool, but I don't know. All right. Well, very good. That's a look at this day in history. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us, Brett. Uh, pitch your show real quick. Uh, weekday morning, 6 till 10, WJLX. Get us at WJLX1015.com. Are all major streaming apps. And I personally like the picture at the below, below bottom left. He does like it. It's scary uh, to me. I like. I look down and I'm like. Uh, all right, yeah. guys. Uh, comment section. Want to hear from you. Roll Tide. We'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.